Um, my name is Elizabeth uh, Wademan. I uh, got baptized uh, June 8, 1990, so that's the day I became a disciple. And uh, I'm the only, actually, last uh, original mission team member of the original mission team to Toronto that was planted uh, June 1st of 2014. So I, uh, I was uh, converted here in Toronto uh, in 19, uh, uh, June 8, 1990. And then uh, I was part of the ICOC, which is the, uh, now we consider it the for former movement. Uh, so um, at one point, the church kind of fell apart here, the ICOC. So uh, Helena's dad, uh, Craig, uh, didn't want to be uh, part of, uh, didn't want to be part of the ICOC anymore. So he made a decision for our family to move to LA. I actually didn't want to go to LA. <laughs> I felt I was forced to actually go to LA and uh, at many times I was even called an unsubmissive wife <laughs> because of it uh, but I, I um, uh, we end up like we prayed a lot about it we saw God's sign uh, in terms of my work my work actually ended abruptly uh, so we saw that a sign that God wants us to uh, move to LA. So we end up going to LA. Uh, I didn't join the new movement right away until 2010. Uh, so we were there, uh, we went back to Alberta and then we went back again to LA and I finally joined the new movement. So that was 2010. And then after uh, four years uh, being there, uh, Tim, Tim Kernan, which was the, the leader of the Toronto mission team, um, the original Toronto mission team, uh, he called all the uh, disciples uh, that are Canadians uh, in LA and we were all in the South region together. So Megan, myself, and then Tim and Leanne. So um, that's when the planning happened. So planning happened around the beginning of, I think the end of 2013 and then uh, 2014. So we were all chosen and we all agreed to it. And then we decided to come back to uh, Toronto to. Uh, plant the church here. Yeah, I remember when I first got a call from uh, from Tim. I remember sitting at McDonald's uh, with Helena, and he's uh, uh, like, "Sis, uh, what you wanted finally came. Uh, we're we're going back to Toronto. How do you feel about that? Are you on board?" I was like. Of course I'm on board. I've been actually wanting to go home at that point. Um, and it's just because we just felt like we were, uh, we were kind of aliens, foreigners. We didn't really have a status in LA. Uh, we were just there because we wanted to be part of the movement there. So that was, uh, we landed here. Uh, we ended up uh, arriving June 1st of 2014. And uh, the, the inaugural service, I think was July 6th. So like uh, just a little bit over a month later. Uh, but I remember like when we first got here, we didn't really have a place to stay. Uh, we didn't have an apartment. So we end up, we actually ended up uh, staying from one hotel. I remember going from like one day in one hotel and then the next day we're in another hotel across the street. Whatever deal uh, we can get, it was very hard. Uh, I actually didn't expect it to be that hard. Uh, I didn't like I didn't like the fact that we didn't have a home. Uh, I have a little one. Helena was still still little. I think she was just grade one uh, when we came back here. Uh, so it was hard. It was actually hard to uh, to get work. So my expectations were I'll get work right away. Craig will get work right away. So financially we'll be fine. But we, it took us a while to actually got, get even our own place. So I remember like being, uh, feeling discouraged um, when we were, for one of our D times, um, we were like both discouraged. Like we were talking to Jake, which was one of the leaders in, in, the, mission, uh, in the mission team, um, who ended up becoming the leader in the future. Um, yeah, we were like just crying to him, crying. I, I was crying, Craig wasn't crying because uh, I was so discouraged. I didn't think it was gonna be that hard. I thought because we moved here, God's just gonna make it so easy for us because <laughs> we're like starting over again. But you know what? I, I uh, yeah, I, I, I'm glad that we, we went through what we did. I think we learned a lot of things, uh, a lot of different things uh, from it. 
So yeah, but it was definitely uh, challenging. So the different challenges that the mission team uh, had to go through, I know uh, with Daniela, so there was Daniela and uh, Michelle. Uh, so their, the original plan for them was just to really help out with uh, Tim and Leanne, uh, helping them with their two kids. Uh, I think Steven also, um, he had to, he cannot work here because he, I think he just had enough money. Uh, so I think culturally for Steven, it was kind of different because he came from the UK. Um, and then uh, uh, I guess just to get things going, like uh, some ICOC uh, people were actually um, trying to join us. So studying the Bible with people. Um, so yeah, it, it was it was kind of hard at the beginning. I think that's expected though for mission teams, especially the first couple of months, to just go through different challenges, finding work, uh, finding a home, all that stuff. So yeah. I think one of the hardest things uh, that the church uh, went through here is uh, when Tim and Leanne actually uh, was chosen to lead our church uh, in LA. Uh, that was very hard uh, because we were like, uh, I don't know, I just always saw them that they're the one that's gonna uh, lead the church here in, in Canada because they're Canadians. So when they left, it was kind of like a shock uh, for, for everyone. We kind of had to play uh, different roles like we had to be very supportive of, of Jake and Megan uh, I don't think they at that point they ever led uh, any church uh, so it was their uh, first experience in leading a church so uh, I remember like um, I don't know if it's the first year we end up like <laughs> selling cupcakes was was became part of our um, something we do to raise money and it almost became a full-time job for Jake, which became the leader of the church. And then uh, Eric Boomer, which is the one of the members of the mission team here, they were selling cupcakes every day. And our, our, their, I, we end up living with them at that point. Uh, so the whole apartment are just full of, uh, <laughs> full of cupcakes. I got sick of cupcakes at one point. <laughs> and then just, just, uh, um, uh, like uh, even um, uh, I think that's the, that's the period of time that uh, Craig, my my ex, that's when he really uh, struggled in his faith. Uh, he became very weak and he ended up he ended up uh, falling away. So that was that was very hard to go through. Um, and then also at the same time, uh, my mom also passed away. Uh, I think we just landed and my mom, after three months or not even a month actually a month or two months my mom ended up uh, passing away overseas and I didn't know about it so that was very hard uh, to go through just starting uh, just starting just starting the mission team uh, so yeah so those are those are the difficult things uh, that we went through I remember like uh, even when I spoke to uh, to Kip uh, he suggested for me to actually go to the Philippines at that point to get some more help, but I could not bring myself to actually leave the church here. Uh, the way it was, like just the just the the health of the church here. I'm one of the original team uh, mission team members, so for me to leave was like I don't know. I just couldn't imagine myself doing that, just leaving the church here. So, yeah, so, and then uh, Daniela and Michelle end up leaving also. Uh, Steven also end up leaving after six months being here. So we, we were like, we, 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 we were depleted. Like we were only, there were only 10 of us to come here. And at this point, it was just myself, Jake and Megan that were actually left from, from the original team. So... Yeah. yeah. I think what helped me a lot is, is really uh, basing a lot of my conviction uh, from uh, my quiet times, like really finding a lot of scriptures. I know Deuteronomy 8 uh, really helped me a lot, that God, uh, that God tests me, uh, especially when I'm going through a, a rough time, whether I'm still going to obey God or not obey God. Uh, so those are the scriptures uh, that I actually kept in mind. 
uh, that really helped me. Like that, uh, another one, consider it pure joy whenever you face trials of many kinds from, ja from many kinds from James 1. So these are, these are the scriptures that really help me and believe that whatever is happening in my life is always part of God's plan. Uh, and God is sovereign over all situations. So those are the things that I, I was thinking of during the times that I, I was going through a very rough time. I, I think uh, what's happening now, is, it's, so, it's so amazing to see all these uh, young Christians uh, becoming disciples. Uh, especially like uh, even just uh, Josh uh, recently, like what he did like for him to, he so, he just loved fellowship so much that he actually built a tent. Like that for me is so inspiring. That's like first century uh, example of someone who wants to really be in fellowship. And just, just their evangelism, like Dylan uh, posting like, oh, can you reach out to this? Can you reach out to that? It's, it's, like, for me as an old Christian, I need to see that. Uh, I get stale in my, uh, in my evangelism, but seeing these young guys really inspire me to be the same. I'm like, you know what? I'm a new creation in God's eyes, although I'm an old Christian, but I'm still a new creation. So if they have it, I have it too. So yeah, so they just, uh, these guys just inspire me. These new converts uh, this last, uh, this year uh, had, be, had been very inspirational. So, it, and also, of course, our, our mission <laughs> that we actually raised, uh, just hearing it yesterday, I, that, just really blew my mind. I had no idea that people are this generous. Like I know we keep doing it every year, but this is this is the best uh, one uh, that we've collected. Like we went so much more than what we than what we planned to give. So I just appreciate the generosity of the church, and just there's so many young Christians, and they already have this heart. So I I feel inspired for the future that we're gonna. Uh, the church is going to keep growing here and we're going to start uh, sending churches in different cities in Canada. Yes, actually I do, I do want to go. Uh, if there's a call to plant another mission team, I still, I still uh, want to go. But I also I, I want to be married when I go. That's my plan. <laughs> I don't know if that's God's plan, but that's my plan. <laughs> I don't know which one we're going to do first, if it's Ottawa. I do need to speak French, <laughs> but yeah, so uh, I think uh, because of my age too, I, I feel like uh, uh, playing a shepherdess role. So it, I'm, not a, I'm not a young woman anymore, uh, I'm not a middle-aged woman, so I'm like getting up there. So I think the, the role uh, that I really aspire for, actually I was praying about it on my way here, uh, is to really imitate. I think Vera does a great job being a shepherdess. Uh, I really have to keep imitating their hearts, uh, both Vera and Tony and also Gislen. Uh, they have amazing shepherd, shepherd's heart. So for me, I think uh, that's the role that I, I do uh, want to keep playing uh, for the church. There's so many young disciples, there's so many young sisters. Uh, so I just have to be more uh, involved in, in uh, really taking care of people. Okay, being the last mission team uh, member, I have mixed feelings about it. Uh, sometimes I feel like, I, I remember crying to Vida one time. Uh, I, I felt like, man, like I'm the last one here. Like I felt sorry for myself actually at one point. I remember bawling my eyes out to, to Vida. And uh, yeah, sometimes I'm very encouraged by it. Uh, sometimes I'm like, you know what? I'm too old now. Like. Sometimes I'm like, is, still God, is God still gonna use me? But these, these are all just lies that I hear. Uh, it's not really from God, but just sometimes I go there. Uh, but I, I, do feel, I do feel special that I'm still here, uh, that I, I know there's a lot of things that have happened. I'm so grateful to God that God had, had kept me faithful. Yeah, the, the cross uh, really inspires me. Uh, to do more uh, for God in terms of just uh, just being focused on God a lot. I think uh, uh, one of my uh, weakness is I, I get self-focused. So I really want to be outwardly focused a lot. Like I, I remember one of the uh, preaching that I heard was to stop searching your heart and just really do God's work. I think 
The cross uh, inspires me not to be selfish. My life here on earth is not about me. Uh, Jesus never made his life about himself. Uh, he made his life about loving God and, and saving people. So I, I want my, actually I want my life to matter. I remember myself as a young Christian, it was hard for me to understand hardship. Uh, I think as I got older, that's how I understood it more, that there's a purpose for hardship. If Jesus went through hardship and He's 100% uh, human, 100% divine, how much more us uh, that we do rely on our flesh a lot uh, to go through hardship. So I, I think uh, having uh, uh, loving, I know it's hard to love suffering when you're there, but not giving up when you are suffering. The cross, uh, the cross is the is what actually helps me to keep going. Um, I know when I when I go through a, a hard time, um, I I think of the cross because if if Jesus had to go through all that uh, to save people, to to save the lost, to sacrifice his own life, so I have to think the same. I signed up when I first became a Christian that this is going to be for the rest of my life. So whatever whatever happens through my journey as a Christian, it's going to be for the rest of my life. So